Best for soil. Soil-borne diseases. Practical information. Hi there, I'm Miguel and I am a plant pathologist, which means that I study plant diseases. In this Best for Soil video, you will find explanations on what soil-borne diseases are, how to recognize them and why they are important. Soil-borne diseases are caused by organisms living in the soil which infect the roots, rhizomes or collars of plants. The soil is inhabited by a diversity of very small living organisms. The majority of them are involved in the degradation of organic matter, contributing to the transformation of organic debris into mineral nutrients and organic matter, essential to feed the plants and maintain soil health. Although practically all these organisms are beneficial to plants, a small number of them can disturb the normal functions of the plant, thereby causing plant diseases. Microorganisms that cause these diseases are called soil-borne plant pathogens, and the diseases are classified as soil-borne diseases, as the organisms causing diseases spend all or part of their life cycle in the soil. There are several general symptoms typically associated with soil-borne diseases. Many of the symptoms occur first on the roots or the basal stem, as these are the plant organs directly in contact with the soil. Nematodes cause lesions or deformation of roots. Fungi cause necrosis, tissue rot or cankers. Some pathogens have a direct effect on the quality of the harvested plant part for example, in carrots. In other cases, fungi colonize the xylem vessels after penetrating through the roots, which leads to reduced water and mineral uptake. As a consequence, yellowing or wilting symptoms develop at a later stage. Hot and dry conditions accelerate the development of the disease symptoms. The symptoms can be confused with a lack of irrigation. Therefore, correct diagnosis is crucial to know if the pathogen is responsible for the symptoms. Diagnosis will allow an efficient management of the soil going forward. One problem in recognizing soil-borne diseases is that in the early stage of disease development, the above-ground parts of the plant, such as the leaves or stems, do not show symptoms. It is also possible that above-ground symptoms are not displayed. This can occur when the disease pressure is not too strong. Still, even in the absence of clearly recognizable symptoms, the growth of the crop can be reduced and yield be decreased. In contrast to airborne diseases, where symptoms are clearly visible and where their importance is sometimes overestimated, the impact of soil-borne diseases is often underestimated, as no clear symptoms can be seen. When the conditions are favorable for the development of a soil-borne disease, the whole crop can be lost, which is catastrophic for the grower. For example, Verticillium dahlia, a fungus that penetrates the roots and then invades the vascular tissues of a susceptible plant, provokes a wilk and later the death of the whole plant. Other fungal pathogens, for example, Coli totricum cocodes, can destroy the roots of the infected plants, which then are no longer able to take up water and nutrients. As a consequence, plant growth is reduced and yield will be decreased. Plant parasitic nematodes can also cause losses in both yield and quality. Some nematodes are specialized to a single crop or plant family. For example, the potato cyst nematodes, which only infect potato. Other nematode species are polyphagous, which means that they infect a range of crops. The root knot nematodes, Meloidogena species, belong to this group and cause problems in a large number of crops all over Europe. With the phasing out of methyl bromide, a powerful chemical soil fumigant, soil borne fungi, and nematodes regained importance. Due to the losses caused by soil-borne pathogens, a lot of attention and effort is placed on the inactivation and elimination of as many pathogens as possible in the soil before planting a new crop.
To achieve this, very toxic chemical fumigants or steam have been applied to soils. However, soil disinfestation using these approaches is expensive and harmful for all the living organisms in the soil, including beneficial microorganisms. For decades, intensive agriculture has overused and misused chemical soil disinfestants, thus reducing all type of life in cultivated soils with a great impact on the natural fertility of soils. Recovering the life and health of soils is possible. Several practices can contribute to re-establishment or maintenance of the fertility level and help to avoid and reduce the severity of outbreaks caused by soil-borne diseases. Some of these practices are promoted by Best for Soil, such as compost and organic amendments, cover crops and green manures, anaerobic soil disinfestation and bio-solarization, all of which are ready for application and adoption.